Welcome to the Published Author Podcast, where we help entrepreneurs learn how to write a book and leverage it to grow their business and make an impact. I'm your host, Josh Steinle. Today, my guest is Michael Zapersky. Michael is the co-founder and CEO of Consulting Success, a global leader in coaching and training entrepreneurs. In the past 20 years, he's worked with thousands of clients, and he's the author of four best-selling books, including last year's Act Now, How Successful Consultants Thrive During Chaos and Uncertainty, which is a timely topic given we haven't had as much chaos and uncertainty in the world as we've had the past year in a long time. Michael, welcome to the show. Hey, Josh. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for being here with us. Uh, Give us a little bit more background on who you are, where you come from, and what led you to the world of coaching and consulting and entrepreneurship. I guess it depends how far back you want to go, but uh, I was born in Toronto. Um, At two years of age, my parents took my sister and I to Israel, spent about four and a half years there, came back to Canada this time to Vancouver uh, at about six and a half years of age did not speak English, did not know anybody, felt like an outsider, uh, decided the way to prove myself or kind of to fit in would be to try and excel at sports, uh, which I did. So at a young age, sports was my life. Everything that I did was around uh, all different types of sports from rugby to track and field, which I was very competitive into basketball, baseball, soccer, uh, you name it, I did it. Just That's kind of what I thrived on. And that sense of competition kind of really still carries through to what I do today. Uh, so I think a lot, a lot of lessons around entrepreneurship actually came from those years uh, of, of playing sports. But when I transitioned from high school into university or actually college, uh, I started my first business with my cousin, Sam, who is still my cousin to this day and still the co-founder uh, of Consulting Success. We've built and sold multiple businesses together over the years. Uh, And it was a web design development agency. We then went on to build another company that was focused on branding and marketing. I went over to Japan, opened up the branch office for that business, worked with some very large organizations, Panasonic, Financial Times, Dow Jones, Sumitomo, Omron, a whole bunch of other, you know, multi-billion dollar organizations, helping them to get their products and services into English speaking markets. Uh, Came back to North America, started another consulting business, this time helping professional services firms do lead generation. Uh, Along this kind of the whole thread that runs through all this, Josh, is that we were running consulting and professional services businesses, uh, making a lot of mistakes, a lot of lessons learned, uh, and having some success along the way. And so when Sam and I, uh, at that point, we were running different companies or doing different things. We were at a family barbecue one summer, and we said, you know, we should do something together again, but this time we should do it online uh, because we've always loved this idea of traveling and being able to live and work anywhere that you want. And so we started Consulting Success really as a way to share our experiences of building successful consulting businesses, but, but really stories from the trenches, the good, the bad, the ugly, uh, with the goal of helping people to fast track their success, avoid common mistakes. There is no real monetization or business plan around it. When we launched, we just thought, let's put this out. Let's share articles and resources. Uh, we are both doing other things. I was running another consulting business at that, at that time, and it just really took off. People said, this is great information. It's very helpful. Uh, do you have a course? Uh, we said, no, nope, but we'll build one. And so we put it together a course on how to become a successful consultant. That did very well. Uh, this is about 13 years back. Uh, and they said this, you know, I've landed my first six figures per year, or I just feel more clear or the, you know, we, lots of great success stories. But people said, is there a way to work more closely with you? Do you have a coaching program? We said, no, we don't have that, but we'll, we'll launch one. And so we did. So fast forward to today, as you mentioned, we've had over 600 consultants come through our Clarity coaching program, several thousand more going through our momentum and other training programs. And so all day, every day, we just focus on uh, helping entrepreneurial consultants to really build uh, more profitable, scalable and strategic consulting businesses. Uh, That's fascinating. Can Can you give us some examples of people who have gone through your courses and programs and the results that they've gotten? Yeah. Um, I mean, so uh, Elliot would be one example, uh, left the corporate world, got into the consulting business, figured it would take him maybe a couple of years to get back up to his director or executive level salary. Uh, and within about, well, seven months, he had already far exceeded it. But within seven weeks, he was already on track to, to hit well into six figures. Um, there's many stories like that of people who have donned another one, transitioned from being a director at the City of Hope um, kind of research center there um, and university. And she uh, replaced her income in a very short period of time. 
uh, and then exceeded it by 30 or so percent. This is all a matter of months for making that transition. And then others who are running successful, you know, high six figure, seven figure consulting businesses who oftentimes are just feeling very stretched. They don't have good systems. They don't have good processes. They've gone to where they are usually just on the back of referrals in their network. They're not very uh, intentional or proactive with their marketing. And so what we've really helped them to do and others to do is to put better systems, better processes uh, in their business, everything that covers from pricing strategies to marketing systems, uh, to also just thinking about their business model and how to create a business that uh, really supports their lifestyle as opposed to the other way around where so many people will build a business and then they have to make sacrifices within their lifestyle to try and support their business. Our whole kind of value system and, and thought process is let's get very clear on what does success look like from a lifestyle perspective first, and then build a business and business model and everything else that supports that to really make sure that your lifestyle is, is at the top and not the other way around. Uh, so with the coaching and the pro, uh, the uh, class, the course that you had going on, yeah. at what point did you say, I need to put this all together into a book? Is that what happened? Is that where the first book came from? Yeah. I mean, like b before you hit record, I think you, you mentioned something along the lines of like that, uh, you know, get to talk about why you want to put together a book. And I don't know if I, it, it was initially, it wasn't that I wanted to do it. It's just something that I, I knew that I should do. Right. I think you go back in history. You just, you know, that uh, having a book is just a really great way to demonstrate your authority, to, de to demonstrate expertise. It's one of these things that can open many doors. Uh, and so I think yeah, we, had, we had started seeing success with the initial course. We thought, let's, let's kind of put something together that would be a, an easier price point, but also that would allow us to get the knowledge and the experience. Our, our whole goal, everything that we do is, is about helping more people. Like deep down inside, I feel like I'm, I'm a teacher, uh, even though I remember I was told by a very uh, old teacher of mine many years ago that I should be a teacher. And I was like, no, no, I'm a, I'm a capitalist. I want to make money. I don't, I'm not here to teach, but I've realized that over time, both her and my mother were, were actually very accurate in seeing and, and believing that I should be a teacher. And that's really what I spend most of my time thinking about these days is, is how to help people. Um, and so just seeing the packaging of, of what a book would allow that you can reach so many people, you can have these channels like Amazon and bookstores and, and other places help you to get your, your book into many people or to be discovered by many people that otherwise might not know who you are. To me and to our company, we thought that was a very powerful uh, way of kind of going about things. And so that's really where Consulting Success, which is also the name of the first book that, um, that I wrote, we kind of took the course and summarized, not, not really summarized it, but it put the, the information you could fit into a book. Obviously, you can put a lot more into a course, but we put that into a more of a book version and format and uh, had a lot of success with it. So tell us more about the success. How was it received and how did you leverage it to grow the business? Yeah, so we've gone through many different iterations um, or, and of how the book was launched. So we started off, we actually created the first version of Consulting Success. Uh, it was not available publicly. So we, we used back then, it was called CreateSpace. It's now uh, Amazon, right? Uh, what's it? Yeah, Amazon, Amazon KDP. KDP. Yeah, so we used the CreateSpace service at that, at that time to essentially, when an order, when somebody ordered our course, we would also ship them out the printed book version of that course. Uh, and so we would spend whatever it was, you know, five, ten, fifteen dollars sending the book version, uh, which people really enjoy because they they have now that physical kind of copy to go along and add value to the digital side of the course they were also receiving. So that's how we started it, uh, and we went through a few different iterations of that. I think we got consulting success. Uh, maybe call it consulting success system 2.0 was a second version. Uh, and then we, we thought we need to really make an update. It's been a while uh, and let's now make this available publicly. And so we kind of updated the name, just consulting success, the, the whole book, there's a whole subtitle behind it. And then that's when we started to launch it publicly and made it available, not through our website anymore. I mean, you could still get it there, but uh, just made it available as a, as a book to be purchased. And so once we put it on Amazon, we did a little promotion around that to make sure that people knew the, new, the latest version was, was there. But still to this day, you know, years later, we see many sales coming in from all around the world uh, from people that otherwise probably don't know about who we are. And what's kind of the hook for the book? What is the reason that people are triggered and say, oh, I've got to read this. This is something that's going to help me solve X problem. Yeah. So the, the book is really meant for the early stage consult. It, it's best suited for the person who is looking to transition from the corporate world or whatever area of employment they, they are in, they feel like they have expertise, they can help people or help organizations, 
but they don't know how to actually package that, position it, place value on it, price it, and actually just think about running the business side, like how to monetize their expertise as a consultant. And when we use the word consultant, because these days many people use the word consultant, for us, uh, our, our world is meaning consultants or people that work with other organizations. So it might be a nonprofit, might be a multi-billion dollar uh, company, but they're all organizations. And so Consulting Success, the book, the whole idea behind it is if you want to figure out how to monetize your expertise, if you want to take the knowledge and skills and experience that you have and, and figure out really how to package it and then present it to the world in a way where you can generate not only a viable, but a very profitable business uh, while avoiding many of the common mistakes that people make in launching their business, whether it's around who their ideal client is, that not having an effective message that gets people's attention, how to think about marketing specifically from a consulting perspective or leaving potentially thousands and thousands of dollars on the table because they don't have an optimal pricing strategy. That's really what we cover in the book. So it's for that early stage consultant or the person transitioning in that wants to get started the right way and really accelerate kind of the success that they can see and feel a lot more confidence that they're doing the right things in the right order. Gotcha. So that was book number one, right? Correct. So then book number two, what's that? And what was the inspiration for that? Yeah. So that was the elite consulting mind. Uh, and, and that really came, you know, after working with consultants for, for many years, we started to see that, uh, you know, the biggest uh, challenge that people were having was not through a lack of knowledge. It was through a lack of action. And so our belief was that it wasn't just strategy and tactics that was actually going to be helpful for people to, to be successful. It was mindset. Uh, and so what we identified in the elite consulting mind was 16 of the most common mindset kind of challenges or situations that consultants face. So for example, pr you know, pricing, uh, marketing, really narrowing in on, on a specialization, uh, dealing with certain client situations. So we, we identified 16 of these from our own business, but also from uh, many of our clients and, and their own stories and situations. And we captured them and we shared those stories so there's a lot of narrative and, and storytelling in there, but there's also a lot of best practices. So you learn about what are these common mindset challenges and, and blocks, and then how can you see them from a different perspective? And then based on that, how can you then take, what's the action to overcome that or to take that next step? And that's what we found is for many people, when they understand what those mindset blocks are and see how to actually overcome them, now they can start taking a lot more action. And when you take more action, you make more progress. When you make more progress, you're seeing greater results. That gives you more confidence. And now you're going to be more likely to go take more and more action. So it's like this loop that just feeds itself. And very often people are stuck. It's not because they haven't read a book or taken a course. It's because something is holding them back from taking action. And that's what the elite consulting mind is all about, uh, is really help people to, to overcome that. A lot of this sounds like the advice that I give my students that I'm helping to become authors. It's the same type of thing. It's, I mean, when oh, we talk really. about writer's block, whenever somebody comes and says, oh, I'm stuck, I've got writer's block. It's like, it's not because you don't know how to write. It's not because you don't have good ideas. It's that something in your mind is bu bugging you and you need to work yeah. that out. And then the writer's block will go away. It sounds really similar. Did you find that at during your author journey of writing these books that you were applying the advice that you give to consultants and coaches to yourself as an author? Yeah, I mean, all the time. Um, I certainly encountered many roadblocks or, or mindset kind of, you know, blocks that would, might get in my way. But what I've always tried to do, and, and more so uh, on an ongoing basis, Josh, is to, uh, if I identify something that might hold me back, then I'll look at, well, what's, so for example, in the book, I, I don't, personally don't love spending a great deal of time, like doing a, a lot of fine, tooth and comb, like editing and nitpicking. So I'll get somebody to help with that, right? Uh, or I'll find wherever there's resistance, I'll, I'll always try and find someone or something that can help to overcome that resistance rather than being held back. Because that's one thing that I've learned and I'm a very big believer in is the power of imperfect action. Uh, and you know, it's interesting, I was just reading a book over the weekend uh, and I see this consistently, really well-received books, bestsellers, and you still find grammatical or spelling mistakes in them but they're, they're successful. I mean, how can it be, you know, for, I think so many people, we have this belief that we need to be perfect and uh, that holds us back from taking action. And, but you can find so many examples uh, and stories around you of people, companies, books, whatever it might be that are extremely successful, but there's still some flaws inside of them. Uh, my, my choice and decision has always been to just accept that there will be some flaws. There will be some aspect that is not going to be perfect, but getting it out there is much more powerful than just waiting for it to somehow be perfect if it ever can be. Yeah, that's definitely the case with books. You see, you see a lot of authors who they refine, they refine, they refine, and then yeah. they never get it done. It never gets out there. 
And an imperfect book is better than the perfect book. All right. So that's books number one, number two. What was book number three? Yeah. I mean, so you're setting us up for the perfect segue because book number three was the, the classic, like the textbook, uh, imperfect action in, in practice. Uh, so here we were, it was, I guess, March of 2020, maybe it was April of 2020, somewhere around, I think maybe it was April of 2020 COVID just starting to rage right in North America. Um, and, and what we started seeing all around us was a lot of people specifically in our world consultants who had no idea what to do. You know, it's, it's like a deer staring into the headlights of a car, fear, uncertainty, uh, and, and I was sitting one morning, uh, early in the morning on a sofa downstairs in my house. And I just decided I'm going to start, I'm going to write a letter to our clients about what I thought they should do, what, what we were doing, the, the mindset, uh, and how important taking action was and what they should be focusing on right now, given what was happening in the world. And given that this, this, this was very uncertain times, but really how to, you know, push beyond, uh, those challenges. And so I wrote that letter and I, I emailed it later that day to all of our clients and the feedback was tremendous. Like it was, this really resonates. Thank you so much. I really need to hear this, to read this. Uh, I had a couple of clients say, saying, this is fantastic. I need to share this with my clients. Can I do that? And so that started to make me think, well, there's something in this message that's really resonating with people. Uh, I need to, to share more of it. So I started sharing this message on LinkedIn, on other platforms. Again, really great response. And I thought, you know what? This is great. This is my perspective, but I'm just one person. Uh, what I really want to do is I want to ask other successful consultants and uh, you know experts that I know who I trust uh, that I know are doing great things. I want to I want to hear from them how they're handling the situation. How are they currently making adjustments in their business to deal with the COVID situation? How are they thinking about the, the kind of the future or what they're going to be doing from now? And so I interviewed a whole bunch of uh, of consultants and, and thought leaders. Uh, put that into the book. And so act now how successful consultants thrive during chaos and uncertainty. We launched it in about five to six weeks from concept to having the book out on Amazon. Um, and so you can, I'm sure there's some things that are wrong with that book, but we had, you know, thousands of people who accessed that book who just said, this is really timely. This is very helpful because it was just a rallying call. Uh, the goal, as you know, Josh, and for most authors, not just necessarily to make money directly from the book. This was, this was really like, we wanna help the industry because people right now at that time were stuck and we want to help them to get unstuck, to get back to you know, building business and doing the things that are most meaningful for them so they can have the impact they want to have. So yeah, that was about five, six weeks from concept to out, out in the marketplace. Um, and uh, I think still many of the lessons that are in there today are, are still very valid. And that's amazing because this is only possible with the miracle of self-publishing, right? I mean, if we were still running the publishing industry the way it worked 30, 40 years ago, it'd be impossible. You just couldn't do a book like this, this quickly. I completely agree. I think there's a lot of benefits of self-publishing, still lots of benefits of traditional publishing. But uh, yeah, I've often thought that as well, that for me, oftentimes I'm not planning a book like a year or two in advance. Most often when, when a book, when I see the concept for the book, it's because I want to write it or I want to you know, start developing it now. Um, and not, I don't want, I don't want to have to wait a year or, or longer for, for it to get into the public. Um, and so that's where I think the power of self-publishing is, is really there. Quick break here. Are you an entrepreneur? Do you want to write a book that will help you grow your business? Visit publishedauthor.com, where we have programs to fit every budget, programs that will help you write and publish your book in as little as 90 days, starting at just $39 per month. Or if you're too busy to write your book, we'll interview you and then write and publish your book for you. Don't let the valuable knowledge and experience you have go to waste. Head on over to publishedauthor.com to get the help you need to become a published author. You've already waited long enough. Do it today. Now, back to the show. Uh, was it hard to learn the system? I mean, you started out with your first book back when it was Create Space. Now it's Amazon KDP, but you've yeah. been through it more recently as well. Uh, what are some of the things you've learned about self-publishing, about the system, things that you didn't know when you were getting started that you wish you would have known or that you think somebody getting started today would like to know? Yeah, I mean, so the technical side, I think anyone, uh, that, that should never hold anyone back. And the number one reason for that is that there's a lot of resources that can help you with that. I mean, I'm, I'm sure Josh, you guys have a lot of resources for your community and clients to help them with that. But 
there's plenty of resources. If you go to, you know, some websites like Fiverr or Upwork or whatever, like you can find people that can help you to convert a file or to get it ready for KDP or, uh, you know, someone to design your cover. These are things that you don't, you don't need to, and really shouldn't worry about yourself because that's not the best use of your time. One thing that I've certainly learned, uh, and I, I think I knew this even when we got started, but it's just become more and more apparent over time, which is that writing the book or creating you know, the book and the design and all those pieces, that's just one part of it. I, I really believe the most important part of, of writing a book is the marketing and the promotion of the book, because you can have a great book, but if you're not marketing it and promoting it, then you're not going to get into the hands uh, of the people that, that you want to make an impact on. So having a very clear plan on how are you going to market your book? How are you going to use the book? Right? Like, uh, what, what do you want to accomplish with the book? Are you actually trying to generate revenue from the book directly? Do you want that book to support some other cause or some other program that you have? Thinking kind of strategically through that process, I think is incredibly important because otherwise you just go into creating a book and then you finish the book, but then there's no, mo no momentum around it. Like you don't really have a good plan for what to do with it. Uh, and so I think planning all that stuff up front and get, getting really clear on it is incredibly important, especially the promotional part, because uh, oftentimes that's stuff that you need to be thinking about and working on and setting up in advance, whether it's going on podcasts, sending emails, having partnerships, all that stuff oftentimes, you know, should be having happening months before the book is actually ready. So what are some of the action items that you've instituted in your launch plans for your books? Yes. Uh, so one is, I mean, we have a, a good size email list, so we'll plan that out in advance in terms of what we're going to be doing. If we're doing any kind of giveaways, if we're tying the book into uh, some other, you know, launch. So for example, the fourth book that came out was called the future of consulting. Um, and that's all, all about really how to future proof your consulting business. And what we saw with that book was, okay, we're kind of getting near the end of COVID hopefully, who knows? I mean, at the time of recording, we don't know what's happening with it, but we, we started seeing a lot of people who were very excited about things reopening. And it's almost like they forgot about all the lessons that have been learned during the COVID time. For example, let's say that you're a speaker and 100% of your business comes from in-person speaking or, or uh, delivering workshops. COVID hits, you don't, you're, business, you're out of business. Well, what can you learn from that lesson? Well, maybe you need to look at diversifying your revenue kind of streams and channels Maybe you want to start bringing things online. So there's a lot of these different lessons that could that have been learned. And I think one of the biggest lessons for any business owner is to start to identify areas where you're overly reliant. Um, and so you want to kind of stress test your business. And that's, I think, again, the big lesson that we could learn during this COVID time. So the future of consulting is all about from a consulting perspective, how to start implementing some of these best practices to really future-proof your business, because we're going to have other health challenges in the future or economic challenges in the future, who knows what's going to happen in the future. But if you start to think about how to future proof your business, uh, then that can really set you up for success. So that was the book, the future of consulting. And what we did with that one to kind of bring this back to your question, Josh, is that we tied it into the launch of one of our uh, online programs. And so we had many different uh, kind of joint venture partners who are also sharing this book because we gave it away for free to all of their audiences. And so we had several thousands of people who got the book, which was great. They got the book for free. They could you know, go and get the Kindle version or paperback version later on for a nominal cost. But we, we tied that all into uh, as a way to get that in front of a lot of people. So that's one thing that we did, sending emails to our list, social media, uh, getting on podcasts to talk about the book as well, something that we planned in advance. Uh, you know, leverage live streams on, on LinkedIn or videos on YouTube. Those are the kinds of things that we did. Uh, and the only other one was some minimal but targeted advertising on channels and kind of platforms like Facebook and, uh, and LinkedIn, Instagram, things like that. And so with all these books, is there any one thing that you've seen that has benefited your business the most where people have come in from that one thing and said, hey, I found your book this way and I want to work with you? Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, I, th I think Perry Marshall um, shared this with me many years ago. And so I'll give him credit because I really think that it was from him. I'm not 100% sure, but regardless, he's a wealth of knowledge, so he deserves the credit. But um, he, he shared with me that in, if you, in your book, if you give people resources or you give them a real reason to go to somewhere else on your website. So book buyers are some of the best buyers there are, right? If someone is, shows enough interest to go and buy your book, download your book, whatever it might be, consume even part of your book, that shows a level of intent, right? Uh, some of it just clicks on a link and it signs up like for a free um, you know, guide. 
they don't necessarily have the same level of intent because there's not as much friction. But for somebody to go and pay for your paperback, your hardback, uh, or hardcover, or uh, or your Kindle, or whatever it is, like they actually have to take out their credit card or click the button. Like there, there's a transaction of money, and and so that's one way to qualify. And that that's why typically book buyers are are going to be some very good customers or clients for your business. And so what we found is that by actually inserting into the books additional resources that people can get, we're able to then you know, leverage the channels, let's say of Amazon to get greater distribution, then bring those people into our world because they read something in the book. Many of them won't necessarily, you know, go from the book to, uh, to request more information from, from uh, a page that we've set up for them. But just because they've read the book or gotten it, they're now more familiar with the brand and who we are. They're more likely to come on, uh, come to our website, reach out and inquire, or even sign up for some of our, our different programs. And we hear this a lot you know, on enrollment calls, people will say, oh, I listen to your podcast all the time, or I've read all of your books, or I've read this book or whatever. And so we, we know the book has, or the books have a big impact on the business. We can't necessarily say like, oh yeah, someone, you know, purchased this book. It's not like an, an ad right online. You can't necessarily attribute that they clicked here, went to this page, signed up here, but we know the same as with the podcast. We know that from a long-term kind of, you know, value creation strategy, uh, it's a really, it plays a really important role. You've mentioned your email list a few times. Can you talk a little bit more about the importance of getting people onto the email list and then how you nurture that? Yeah, I mean, do it right away. Start now, don't wait. Um, I think you know you talk to most entrepreneurs and business owners, and they'll they'll tell you that one thing they wish they would have started sooner is collecting email addresses. Um, you know, having it's an incredible asset. So we we talk about actually in the future of consulting book that uh, again, I interviewed several uh, experts and, and consultants and thought leaders and creators for that book. Uh, and one of the big themes that stood out among, amongst the most successful was that they had a community. Uh, and that's really what your email list can be is, is it's a community because you have, when you wanna launch, let's say a new program, whether it's something that's free or paid or whatever, you have a direct channel to access those people. And that's very, very powerful. If you don't have that, then something happens. You know, how do you, how do you, get in touch with the people that you want to serve? How do you make an offer to people that you want to be your clients or customers? Uh, and so the sooner you have that email list, the better. And so my recommendation for every entrepreneur, uh, regardless of you know what industry you're in, is find a way to start building a list of your ideal clients. Uh, and that's going to require you to, to really deliver a lot of value first, uh, where you're giving you know, 95, 99% of the value. Uh, but every once in a while, a small percentage of those people will go, yeah, this is you know, this is free information. This is great information. Or I resonate with what this person is saying. Uh, and now you have that direct channel to reach those people and they're going to become your, your clients and your customers. Perfect. So uh, we didn't really give you a lot of time to speak about the fourth book that uh, just came out. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. I mean, so it's, it's really just kind of, as I mentioned there, Josh, that we saw a lot of people who it, you know, through their actions were, it, to me, it, it felt like they were missing a big opportunity through the challenges that COVID provided, which was, was how to really future-proof your business, how to look at where you're, you're weakest, where you're potentially most reliant on one source of income or a one channel. Uh, and then I went out again and interviewed uh, colleagues and friends who are running successful businesses themselves and looked at what are the common themes amongst them. Uh, community building was, was one. Uh, you know, leveraging the online kind of channels and platform in terms of courses or programs was another. And so we distilled down all this kind of these best practices and then shared in uh, the future of consulting in the book, what those practices were and what people are, are, are actively doing in their businesses. It's a very short read. It's, it's not as long as some of the other books. Uh, but again, this was about taking action. It was about connecting it to uh, a launch that we had at that time, but it's, it's still available on uh, on Amazon and other platforms for, for people. So part of why I wanted to talk about this book a bit more too, is a lot of the people that I work with, a lot of the listeners to the show, when they hear about a book that's based on interviews, they get interested in that because they say, well, then I don't have to write it. I can go interview other people and I can create a book around those interviews, which yeah. is exactly how I got my start too. My very first book was a compilation of interviews. Uh, what are some of the pros and cons of writing a book that's based on interviews and what were some of the differences in writing that versus some of your other books? Yeah, I mean, it definitely saves a lot of time because I think one of the greatest challenges that authors have is content, right? Coming out, coming with the content, coming with the ideas. Uh, and so I, I really love the, the, I, the kind of the concept or the approach of going out, tapping into the knowledge and expertise that other people have 
and then bringing that back in. You as the author and the creator still get to decide what ends up in the book or doesn't. You can kind of weave the pieces together. Uh, but I think that's a, it's a really powerful opportunity um, to not only save yourself a lot of time, um, but also to, to uh, pull in best practices and knowledge and insights that you know, are coming from other people. Uh, to me, that's just such a powerful way of delivering greater value that it's not only your opinion and your thoughts, but you're also getting seeing what other people are doing. And especially when you start seeing that there's a lot of similarities amongst these, these same people, that, that's, the, that's a best practice of success, right? When you can identify what's working for many people, there's a reason that it's working. Uh, and so that's really what I've tried to do both in ACT Now uh, and uh, in the, the future of consulting. Just the other thing that, that I'll mention is uh, Michael Hyatt, I remember many years ago, talked about this concept of 10 80 10. Uh, and I find that to be a very powerful principle when, when you're thinking about content creation. So this, this might help some of you know, your, your listeners and clients as well, which is you, know, you start off, so as the kind of the creator behind this, uh, you start off the first 10% is the idea, the strategy. So you, with your book, you get very clear on like, what do you want the book to accomplish? What do you want it to cover? What are the theme? What are the, you know, what's the hooks? All that kind of stuff. You plan all that out and you might create then a, a bit of an outline around that. Then the 80% part is where you can bring somebody in to actually help you to do a lot of the heavy lifting. So this might be like a ghostwriter or just somebody to take maybe interviews that you've, you've, uh, you've done and to kind of assemble them. But they do a lot of that heavy lifting, that, that 80%. And of course, these percentages don't have to be exact. could be 70, could be 80%, whatever. But the idea is they're doing a lot of the heavy lifting for you. And then the final 10% is where the magic happens because this is now where you come back in and you start editing and reviewing and you work with that person or whoever it is that you, know, that you have to, to really refine it so that it's still coming through with your tone, with your voice. It still in incorporates and includes everything that you, you feel is important for the book to have, but you're, you're saving yourself a lot of time. And so I think that's an approach that, especially for those people who just don't naturally feel like they are good writers themselves or don't want to write, uh, you could still use this approach to create a book uh, and get one out there a lot sooner than just trying to toil away for, for years. That is great advice because there are a lot of people who they want to be authors, but they don't necessarily want to be writers. Uh, for yourself, did you enjoy writing before you got into writing books? Was that something you were already doing? Uh, absolutely not. So <laughs> I, um, I, I'll, I'll give you, I'll take you back for a minute. So I actually didn't, did not read a whole book until I was about, probably 16 years old. Um, and then I think the first book I read was either The Godfather or, or Shogun. And it opened up my mind. I was like, wow, these, these novels are amazing. Uh, and then I actually became a kind of voracious reader uh, and still love reading to this day. Uh, but writing is not something that I excel at. Again, you know, English was my second language, uh, which I know is surprising for many people, but it's because I've been here so long. Uh, but no, I did not really enjoy writing. At, at a stage in my life, I really enjoyed writing poetry, then I did enjoy writing, uh, but I've done both with, with, with books. I've done some where I've written everything. I've done others where I've done the 10, 80, 10 approach. Um, and for me, I mean, there's, there's something obviously very intimate and enjoyable about being 100% in control of that process. But I think it's important for each person to decide what is the goal of that book or of that, that product. You know, what, what do you, how do you want to, like, what do you want to serve? And, and based on that, you can decide what is the right approach. I think the most important thing for, in my mind, Josh, is that people take their ideas and the value that they can contribute to society or the impact that they can have, and that they get them out there into the world. They're not doing anybody service by just holding on to those ideas. And so you hear sometimes about people that have, you know, spent years with a book idea, but they've never gotten it out. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if that's, if at the end of the day, they get out a great book and it serves, it has the impact they want to have fantastic for them. My personal belief though, is that for a, a business purpose, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're running a business, you're an entrepreneur and you want your book to support your business, then you're going to be much better served by trying to get that book out a lot sooner. And so whether that is you writing it or somebody helping you to write it, just choose a path that is going to kind of the path of least resistance that will help you to see the result that you want in the you know, shortest time possible. Great. Well, Michael, we've gone through a lot of stuff really quickly here. Are there any uh, final tips that you have for first time authors just getting started? Yeah, well, I mean, first thing I would encourage everybody to leverage what you have going on uh, over there. Uh, Josh, you have a lot of resources for authors and even people that may not be writers yet, but want to get a book you know, out. Uh, I would leverage people like Josh and, and others who have that experience, who can give you a path um, to get you there a lot sooner. And my biggest recommendation would be don't overthink it. 
Uh, again, I'm a big believer in this idea of imperfect action. And I see a, a book like, you know, a piece of art in the sense that when your first drawing is not going to necessarily be as good as the drawing that you do in five years from now, your first book doesn't have to be as good, you know, or you don't expect it necessarily to be, to, to be your best work. It might turn out to be, but it might not. Uh, I think the most successful artists, whether they're musicians, uh, you know, fine artists, writers, uh, are, are those who really take this mindset of being prolific at their craft. They're constantly doing it. Uh, they don't look at just one thing as being the end all and be all. It's, it's really about taking the ideas they have, developing that intellectual property, putting it out into the world, and then building upon that. Uh, and the more and the more of that that you do, I think the more successful that, uh, that you'll become at that craft. Fantastic. Well, Michael, if people want to connect with you, learn more about you, your business, where's the best place for them to go? So consultingsuccess.com is home to hundreds uh, of free articles, videos, resources. We also have the Consulting Success Podcast. Uh, we've also co compiled some of our most popular articles and resources and best practices for anyone who wants to uh, start a successful consulting business, as well as grow a successful consulting business. So whether you're just getting you know, going or you're already running a high six figure or a million dollar consulting business, and you want to take things to the next level. We've compiled some of our best resources and that's available as a, as a blueprint guide. You can go to consultingsuccess.com forward slash blueprint uh, to get access to it right away. Awesome. Thanks so much, Michael, for being with us here today on the published author podcast. Josh, thanks for having me. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to spread the word, please give us a five-star rating review and tell your friends to subscribe too. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you listen to podcasts. And if you're an entrepreneur interested in writing and publishing a nonfiction book to grow your business and make an impact, visit publishedauthor.com for show notes for this podcast and other free resources.